Hello and welcome. I did promise to make another video of the Legion Sakaran Omega tank destroyer when the rules were released. You can pre-order this tank on the Forge Worlds website. What we're going to do is uh, have a little bit of this video running and things and uh, also put up the, the rules for both uh, Horus Heresy and uh, uh, 40k. We might as well start with 40k 8th edition rules. It's got a weapon skill of 6 plus, strength is 6, toughness is 7, uh, 14 wounds, leadership 8 and save of 3 plus. With its remaining wounds 7 to 14 plus, its movement is 14 inches, ballistic skills 3 plus and attacks are 4. Wounds of 3 to 6 remaining, movement is 10 inches, ballistic skill 4 plus and attacks 3. And then when it's only got 1 to 2 wounds its movement is reduced down to 8 inches, ballistic skill 5 plus and attacks 2. It's equipped with an Omega Plasma Array and a Heavy Bolter. It can also be equipped with two Heavy Bolters or two Last Cannons. Mine's equipped with the two Last Cannons there. And you can also give it a Hunter Killer Missile or, and or a Storm Bolter. Its abilities, uh, if it explodes, it's reduced to zero wounds. You roll a D6 before removing it from the battlefield. On a six, it explodes and each unit within nine inches uh, suffers D3 plus one mortal wounds. That's pretty horrific nine inches it's pretty good distance um but there's a possibility of suffering four mortal wounds uh, smoke launchers once per game instead of shooting uh, any weapons it can use its smoke launchers i don't know how because on there it doesn't look like it's got any smoke launchers whatsoever uh, unlike your normal well even your um land raiders and things have them and your rhinos uh, but there you go that's that uh, points wise if you wanted to use it in competitive play it's 170 points base but then you're going to have to buy the all its options so the last cannons are 25 points each storm bolters is two heavy bolters are 10 and so on so the heavy bolters and last cannons as they've just got the usual uh stat line but the main weapon here the omega plasma array um you when you're firing it you can choose different weapon options uh the thing is what i was taken aback by i wasn't taken aback. i was sort of expecting it that it would be short range like the missile launcher like the, i don't know why they've done this but they it seems to me that 40k is is quite shooty and uh they've just reduced the range from a lot of things the the radio dreadnought was a prime example of that but uh, the plasma volley it's only 24 inches it's heavy six strength seven ap minus three damage one but then it can fire a sustained burn same range but it's three shots now heavy three but this time it's strength nine ap minus three but damage three furthermore if any hit rolls are made for the weapon that result in one or more results of a one the firing vehicle suffers d3 mortal wounds any wound roll of a six made for this weapon automatically inflicts an additional mortal wound on the target. I never really like weapons that have a sort of random factor of damage in your own vehicle. I think it's the 41st millennium. They must have really worked out all the kinks and things in, in technology. I mean, yeah, may, maybe with the plasma weaponry, it might be quite unstable and things like that. But you're pretty much saying that when you're firing and you've got the hits, I mean, you've got three shots there. If you get a one out of those three shots, then that's D3 mortal wound. So say you're really unlucky and you get three ones, <laughs> let's just say. Um, and then you're really lucky again and you get three. And then, and then you get, I don't know, two fives and a six on your mortal wound um, hit roll. You've just knocked your tank down to five wounds which means its movement is now 10 inches its ballistic skill is four plus and its attacks is three so you've just knocked knocked your vehicle all the way back to five which is crazy and how much of a reward is it for this um sustained burn firing mode well any wound roll of a six automatically inflicts an additional mortal wound on the target so let me get this right. Let's say you hit your target three times and you wound three times and two of them are sixes. So that's three wounds and then you get another two. So that's five wounds. 
even the best case scenario where you get three sixes to wound means you'll only get another three wounds. So you'll have you'll have attributed six wounds in total. It basically means that firing in this sustained burn is going to cause you more damage statistically. Statistically, you're going to get six mortal wounds on your own tank. So it's six for six. So the payoff doesn't outweigh the, the risk because you could get extremely unlucky and then you could get nine wounds on your own tank. So you're making that risk. Do you go for the six wounds on a, on a vehicle or do you lose nine? You know, it's, I don't like, like weapons, the way that they've done this. Um, they, they've made it too much of a, uh, a gamble um, and too much of a risk to fire that sustained um, shot. But you do get damage three. So you have to take that into account too. So it might be worth going for the, the lower strength that doesn't have any of these um, you know, factors in it. So you, at least you're getting six shots of strength seven. But the one thing that really gets me is this range. It's got these massive plasma cannons and it's only got the same range as a bolt gun or, or a storm bolter for that matter. Yeah, I think this is another case of what they've done with the Arcus. They've created a lovely looking vehicle um, and the rules just don't fit with it. It's the same with the Punisher as well, unfortunately. They did a really good job with the original Sakaran, then they, uh, and it was cheap and the weapon was very good and then they nerfed it a little bit. <laughs> They they bumped up the price, you know, points wise and and real real money wise as well. So they're not really doing themselves any favors with these new Sakarans, in my opinion. Uh, how does that compare to the the normal Sakaran? Well, a no normal Sakaran does cost more points. It's fourteen points as opposed to uh, ten power points. It's got exactly the same stat line in terms of wounds, leadership, uh, save. Um, same stat line in terms of uh, wounds and, and the damage it can take. You know, it's still a fast tank. Uh, but the twin accelerator auto cannon, which is eight shots at double the range of this, is strength seven. Yes, its AP is only minus one, but it is two damage. And then every wound roll of a six increases the AP of that wound to a minus three. So output wise, with eight, eight shots at a further range, the normal Sakaran is probably most likely to do more damage um, than this in 40k. That's the way I'm reading it anyway. Okay, so I'll be comparing the, the rules on the, the Forge Wars website with my Legion Astartes Age of Darkness Army list book. Uh, the Sakaran is in that book. So firstly, I'll talk about the Omega uh, Tank Destroyer. Uh, it will run you up at 235 points, which is very expensive. Um, it's ballistic skill and armor, exactly the same as normal Sakaran. So you've got 13, then 12, 12, and three hull points. It's heavy support choice uh, for a Special Marine Legion Army. It's got the turret mounted Omega Plasma Array. Uh, and just here, it just seems like the, the rules for the weapon are better. Um, you do have to pay for your heavy bolters or las cannons, so that's an extra 40 points. So that's 275 points, which compared to a normal Sakaran, uh, which is 205 points, you're paying an extra 65 points there um, for this Omega uh, Plasma Array. And the Accelerator Autocannon is pretty good anyway. I mean, in, for, in Horus Heresy, it's a six-shot rending rapid-tracking weapon with AP4 of a range of 48 inches. Okay, so how does this Omega Plasma Array uh, differ from the 40K edition? Well, it's got the two fire modes, um, like, uh, like the 40K stats. It's got the Plasma Volley and Sustained Burn again. So Plasma Volley, uh, they're both range of 24 inches, um, which again is slightly odd. I would have rather had one... A bit longer range but still so plasma volley is strength 7 ap2 heavy 6 twin linked this is a good thing about this this tank is that it gets the twin linked as it should and then sustained burn is strength 9 inches ap2 again heavy 1 so you're only getting one shot which is a bit poor so it's a bit like a las cannon uh, but it's got plasma burn twin linked and gets hot so unfortunately 
It's a Lance Cannon at 24 inches and it can get hot, but it's twin linked. So that's what you're paying your 270 odd points for, uh, a hole mounted shorter Lance Cannon. However, it does have this plasma burn rule. If the target of the weapon is a vehicle and it loses one or more hull points as a result from the attack, roll a d6. You got a 50-50 chance, so roll a 4+, plus, and the target vehicle loses additional hull points with no cover saves allowed. If the attack resulted in a glancing hit, the number of additional hull points inflicted is 1. If the attack resulted in a penetrating hit, the number of additional points inflicted is d3. So say you drive this tank up close because you've got to get close for the 24 inches um, say you hit with the twin linked um, strength 9 shot the sustained burn which which plasma burn is only for sustained burn say you get a a penetrating hit and it loses it loses a hole point um, on a 4 plus you can obviously then get uh, more hole points off the vehicle uh, by d3 so it has a potential of knocking quite a few hull points with this uh, Omega Plasma Array. However, it also has this volatile plasma containment, so there is a bit of a downside. According to this rule, if the Sakara Omega suffers an explodes result, you add plus two to the strength and plus three to the radius of the blast if it explodes. So, that, so that's pretty horrific. And remember, it's also got gets hot. So there's... So there is that. But I don't think all of that is nearly as bad as suffering mortal wounds on your own vehicle, you know, per sort of shot. You know, having those potentially nine mortal wounds on it for for trying to overcharge it, it, it is incredibly crippling. You know, you could end up blowing, blowing your own tank up um, in two turns. So yeah, it's it's a similar case to the other um, Takarins in the, especially the Arcus as well, which I was quite worried about. My summary of the rules is that they did a really good job of the uh, original Sakaran. Um It was very cheap points wise. The weapon was fantastic. Um, it's a fast light tank. It can move around the battlefield and flank positions and its weapon was great against flyers as well. And what they've done with all of these is they've been create they've created some lovely looking uh, new turret uh, weapons. But unfortunately for the 40k rules, I don't think they're they're as good. I think they've dumbed them down, and I don't think they're nearly as effective. So you've got to ask yourself: Are they actually going to be worth you fielding in a in an army? Um, I mean, they certainly look cool, but uh, I think for now their their strengths are, are definitely in uh, the Horus Heresy. But who knows, that, that may change. And that's all I really want to say about the uh, Omega Tank Destroyer, uh, the, the rules of it. Um, no doubt Forge World will probably put up the Orion for pre-order next week or maybe the week after, and I'll do a separate rules uh, video for that flyer. Um, but I did say I was going to do one for this, and this is it. So what do you guys think of the rules? Can you think of any scenarios where this tank would really play to its strengths? Please do put it in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.